California is no stranger to wildfires, but in recent years, they've grown larger, deadlier, and more destructive. From the devastation in the Palisades to the infernos currently engulfing Los Angeles, these fires have left thousands displaced and millions of dollars in damages. But why do these fires keep happening? And why does it seem like the state government is failing to stop them? Let's dive in. First, let's talk about the causes. Wildfires in California are fueled by a deadly combination of natural and human factors. 2023 was one of the hottest years on record, setting the stage for disaster. Human activities, like power line failures, careless campfires, and even arson, have sparked many of these fires. For example, a power line operated by utility giant PG&E caused the deadly campfire in 2018. And this year, similar allegations have been raised in connection to the fires ravaging Los Angeles. But that's not all. There's another powerful force at play, the Santa Ana winds. These infamous winds, also known as devil winds, are hot, dry gusts that blow from inland deserts toward the coast. Here's how they work. As air moves from the high-pressure systems over the Great Basin region, east of California, down toward the lower-pressure coastal areas, it gets compressed and heats up. This dry, fast-moving air sucks moisture out of vegetation, making it even more flammable. The Santa Ana winds also fan the flames of existing fires, causing them to spread rapidly. These winds can reach hurricane-like speeds turning small brush fires into massive infernos within hours. When combined with bone-dry vegetation and record heat, they create the perfect storm for wildfires to thrive. Now, let's turn to the role of the state government. Despite California being a wildfire-prone state, there have been repeated failures to predict, prevent, and mitigate these disasters. Here's how. California's forests are a tinderbox. Decades of poor forest management have left millions of acres overgrown and vulnerable. While the state has allocated some funding for forest thinning and prescribed burns, experts say it's not nearly enough to keep up with the growing risk. Some of the shortcomings start with the 2014 voter approved $7.5 billion water bond to build two new reservoirs that have to this day not been built. In June 2021, the Globe concluded a report which exposed that Governor Gavin Newsom misled the public about his wildfire prevention efforts by 690 percent. Governor Newsom claimed that, due to his executive order, 35 of his priority projects had treated over 90,000 acres with wildfire prevention treatments. However, Data from the state only showed 11,399 acres treated. More recently, Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass slashed the LAFD budget by $17.6 million in the 2024-25 fiscal year. In areas like Los Angeles, emergency response systems are often overwhelmed when fires break out. Residents frequently report delays in evacuation alerts, and fire crews are stretched thin. The state simply hasn't invested enough in expanding fire resources to match the increasing scale of these disasters. The state's reliance on utilities to maintain power lines and prevent spark-ups has been another major failure. While companies like PG&E have faced fines and lawsuits, the government has been slow to enforce stricter regulations or oversee critical infrastructure upgrades. Another major factor that contributed to the destruction in the Palisades was the San Juinez Reservoir being offline. While the reservoir's water levels were already low due to ongoing drought conditions, it was completely unavailable during the fire because the reservoir's protective cover was undergoing repairs. This meant that a critical water source for firefighting efforts wasn't operational when it was needed most. The repairs, overseen by the Department of Public Works, 
DPW, were intended to address long-term maintenance issues. But here's the shocking part. Officials from the DPW failed to notify the fire department that the reservoir would be offline before the Palisades fire started. When the fire broke out, firefighters were left scrambling to find alternative water sources. Helicopters and ground crews had to travel farther for water, wasting precious time that could have been spent containing the fire in its early stages. This delay allowed the fire to grow rapidly, ultimately destroying homes and threatening lives. The consequences of these failures are devastating. Communities in places like the Palisades and Los Angeles are bearing the brunt. Lives are lost, homes are destroyed, and billions are spent on firefighting and rebuilding. And the ripple effects don't stop there. The smoke from these fires contributes to poor air quality, impacting public health across the state. Economically, businesses and tourism take massive hits every fire season. So, what can be done? Here are three critical steps California must take. The state needs to significantly increase funding for clearing overgrown vegetation and conducting prescribed burns. Investing in advanced firefighting technology, like drones and AI-powered fire detection systems, can help spot and contain fires faster. California must enforce stricter regulations on utility companies to prevent equipment failures from sparking fires. Ultimately, these solutions require bold leadership and accountability, something California desperately needs right now. California's wildfires are a crisis, but they're not inevitable. With the right strategies and leadership, we can turn the tide. What do you think California should do to prevent these disasters? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into today's most pressing issues.